Okay, guys, this is your video answer key for our formative assessment today. We're recording significant figures first here. Looking at our first number here, remember these first zeros do not count. They don't follow a decimal and end the number, but these remaining zeros follow the decimal and the number. So that's one, two, three, four, five for this one. This next number here, we have zeros that end the number, but there's no decimal point following. So only the first two digits count here. The rest of these zeros are placeholder zeros. And then this number here, we have two sandwich zeros and two zeros that end the number. Those do not count because they don't follow a decimal. So there's four for this one. So the six, zero, zero, and the six do count. So that's our first couple of answers there. So remember, do not count zeros that follow a decimal, but do not end the number. And do not count ending zeros if they don't follow a decimal. All right, now we're into rounding correctly here. After adding these two numbers together, we do have the number 357.053. We need to round this correctly. There's three decimal places in this number, but only two in this number here. So we'll round to two decimal places. Correctly rounded would be 357.05. All right, now we're going to do multiplication. After we get done multiplying these two numbers, it's 155925 and three zeros. Now with multiplication and division, it's not like addition and subtraction. You round to the least number of significant digits. There is only two in this number here. Those ending zeros don't count. And there's four in this one. So we'll round to only two. So this becomes one. The five next door becomes a six for this five here. If we look next door, that means we round that up. And then everyone else has to become zeros here. All right, so that's the correctly rounded number there. Now what about converting in the metric system? 13.4 millimeters equals how many decimeters? Well, we're going to do the jump method, make it easy. So millimeters to deci is one, two jumps to the left. So I'm going to drag my decimal place one, two to the left. That number would be 0.134. Now what about kilograms to grams? Well, we're starting at the kilo stair. We go down one, two, three stairs to our base unit of grams. So I'm going to drag this one three to the right. So it's 4,500. And don't forget that base stair includes grams, meters, and liters. All right, moving along, write the following formulas, aluminum permanganate. So aluminum, if you look at the periodic table, you remember it has a plus three charge. Permanganate is a polyatomic iron, MnO4. It has a minus one. We'll put a parenthesis around that. Crisscross your charges. There's a three down here. We would write a one there, but remember we don't write ones. Antimony five chloride. Antimony is Sb with a plus five. The Roman number indicates the charge. Chloride is Cl on the front side of the periodic table, it not being a polyatomic ion. A minus one, crisscross charges. We'll put a five down here and a one would go there. Okay, but we don't write ones. Okay, now we're on to some quantum mechanics. Determine the frequency for the following wavelength. We have 103 nanometers. Remember what's new? New is C over lambda. So we're gonna take C, which is three exponential eight. We'll divide that by 103 uh, exponential minus nine. Remember, nano is 10 to the minus nine. And that gives us an answer of 2.91 exponential 15 and a unit for that is Hertz HZ. Now we want to determine the energy for that. We'll use Planck's constant. Uh, e is equals Planck's constant 4.14 E to the minus 15 and we'll multiply it by that energy of 2.91 E15 and that gives us a value of 12.1 electron volts. Okay. Now last but not least, what about some electron configurations and dot diagrams? Okay, for phosphorus, we're going to start S with a diagonal rule, 1S, and of course S is going to have 2, and then we have 2S2, and then 2P6. That's a total of 10 electrons. Phosphorus has 15 total electrons, so let's continue. 3S2, and then 3p3 is our ending. 
So we have 1s2, 2s2, okay, 2p6, 3s2, and then we're hearing at 3p3. That's a total of 15 electrons, 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 5 is 15. The dot diagram, of course, is given to us by the S2P3, which is five dots, two together, and three separate. All right, last, we'll do the noble gas configuration, and this would be for antimony. We're going to go up and over. We got the noble gas, that's krypton. Remember, always go up and over and grab that noble gas. Not include anything else that filled in that level. We have a 5S2 that is filled. And then, of course, we'll have a 4D10. And then a 5P3. Because we're in the 5P3 location right here. This is 1, 2, and 3. And our dot diagram, of course, is governed by the S2, P3 again. So we have five dots. All right, hopefully you did well in this formative assessment. We'll review some more.